Well, good day and welcome on this 14th of November 2021. Over these last four weeks, we've looked at Psalm 107, and today is the last one that we're going to be looking at to finish off the psalm and to see exactly how wide the mercy of God is. And, you know, we've already looked, haven't we, at those who would seek the Lord in trouble, those who were rebellious by their own choice, and those that were just foolish and, and were pressing the self-destruct button, and those that think they have control, and yet every one of them came to nothing. They were, were bound in chains, they were in storms in the sea, their, their life was slipping away from them. And yet, we saw that God's mercy, when they called upon his name, was wide enough to encompass all those. But what happens if we don't? What happens if we don't call on the name of the Lord? What is the outcome of those who continue without seeking, continue as rebellious, continue as foolish, and continue as wanting to be in control, king of our own life, as it were? Well, Psalm 107 verse 33 begins to tell us what happens. It says this, He turns rivers into a wilderness. So the very things that we, we thought were, were good for us, that we're, we're getting away with, as it were, becomes a desert to us. And the water springs into dry ground. A fruitful land into barrenness. Those things that we thought profited us no longer will profit and they will be barren. For the wickedness of those who dwell in it. Says this, a fruitful land into barrenness for the wickedness of those who dwell in it. Wow, friend. Even that which we thought we had we will lose. Even that which we thought was fruitful for our life will be gone. That's heavy stuff. That is really heavy stuff. But let me just remind you how wide the mercy of God is because for those who cry out to him in their distress, in their trouble, those who call upon his name, verse 35 tells us this, he turns a wilderness into pools of water and dry land into water springs. There he makes the hungry dwell, that they may establish a city for a dwelling place. Remember, first lot were those that were hungry and God fed them, fed their soul. The second lot were those that were looking for a city and he established them a city for a dwelling place and sows fields and plants vineyards, that they may yield a fruitful harvest. He also blesses them, and they multiply greatly, and he does not let their cattle decrease. Wow! The difference between those that call on the name of the Lord and those who ignore his call. And what happens? Well, the world is not happy when people speak about Jesus. The world is not happy when people speak about perhaps there being sin in our lives. Perhaps that we make ourselves out to be God of our lives. Verse 39, it says, when they are diminished and brought low. These are, these are the believers. Diminished and brought low through oppression, through affliction and sorrow. He pours contempt on the princes and causes them to wander in the wilderness where there is no way. Yet he sets the poor on high, far from affliction, and makes their families like a flock. 
You see, even when the world comes against us, God raises us up. And the world is judged. He pours contempt on princes and causes them to wander in the wilderness where there is no way. And the outcome, in verse 42, the outcome is there for us. The righteous see it and rejoice. And all iniquity, that sinfulness and wickedness, stops its mouth. It can't say a thing. Whoever is wise will observe these things. And they will understand the loving kindness of the Lord. Friend, we've been on a journey these last four or five weeks now. And now we know that his mercy endures forever. And we now understand the loving kindness of the Lord. How do we know that Jesus is the one who can deal with each of these conditions that we've looked at over these last four weeks? Well, in Luke chapter 4, Verse 17, Jesus comes to his synagogue, his hometown in Nazareth, and comes to the synagogue and they give him the book of Isaiah to read. And so he stands up and it says this, and he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, and this is what he read from Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. You see, the, the first one, the gospel to the poor, that's those that were uh, in really in, with poverty of spirit and hunger and thirsting after God. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. So setting people free, opening the eyes of the blind and healing them, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, those in chains to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. And it says this, how do we know that Jesus can deal with us in every area that we've looked at from Psalm 107? Well, he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down and the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him and he began to say to them today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing the one that was anointed to come and give his life for us to speak good news to the poor to preach the gospel of salvation to bring people out of darkness into his marvelous light to bring people out of bondage into the freedom that the sun sets them free they shall be free indeed to bring people who are hungry in their soul to be fed and satisfied by the bread of life and the living water. Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Friend, I want to ask you something. As we close this five week series, is this scripture fulfilled in your life today? Have you received the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Saviour? 
as the one who speaks his word to our hearts and brings healing. As the one who sets us free from the bondage of our own rebellion against God. As the one who shows us that we are not in control. In fact, we are out of control. And he came to bring his life into our life. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Friend, fix your eyes on Jesus. And you will know his freedom. The righteous see it and rejoice. All iniquity stops its mouth. Whoever is wise will observe these things and they will understand the loving kindness of the Lord. How wide is the mercy of God, friend, it extends to you and to me as we call upon him. The Lord bless you.